Faith for Today with Colin Urquhart and Julia Fisher. During this Holy Week, Colin, we're continuing looking at the prophecy of Isaiah, realising that it was written to Israel, but it also applies to us today. It was written then, and it has a future implication as well. Yes, and we can, as God's chosen and anointed ones, we can apply these scriptures to ourselves because what God is doing is talking about himself, of talking about how he deals with his people, and he's giving wonderful promises, all of which, of course, are fulfilled in Jesus. Now, the scripture clearly says that Jesus is the yes and the amen to all the promises of God. So those of us who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord, we can inherit all the promises, both of the Old and the New Testaments. Now, in uh, Isaiah 46, verse 10, we read this. I say, that's, this is God speaking, my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. And then he says, what I have said, that will I bring about. What I have planned, that will I do. Now, I said yesterday that these prophetic words in, in Isaiah have had such a profound effect upon my life, and I've seen so much of God's presence and power released in my life and ministry because I have believed these words and applied them to myself. Now, these particular verses that I've just read have had a particular influence upon me. I believe this with all my heart. I believe that God is in charge of my life. I believe that God leads me. I believe that God has his plan and purpose, and he watches over me as he watches over all his people to ensure that his plans and purposes will be fulfilled. I believe that God is the sovereign Lord. The devil, demonic powers and authorities cannot prevent God from doing what he determines to do. And if my trust is in him, then he will ensure that his plan and purpose for my life shall be fully accomplished. So I receive these words as God's spoken word into my heart. My purpose will stand. I, I can put my name in there. My purpose will stand, Colin, and I will do all that I please in your life. And uh, you see, you can, you can appropriate these words because Jesus is the yes and the amen to all the promises of God. There's great promise here. My purpose will stand. So why don't you believe God's purpose will stand in your life? He will do all that he pleases with you. All you have to do is to surrender your life into his hands so that he can do with you what he intends. And then he says, what I have said, that will I bring about. If God has given you promises, he will fulfill them because he is the faithful God. He keeps faith with his people. He never fails to fulfill that which he said he will do. What I have planned, that will I do. And you see, it's not a question of me running with my plan or you running with your agenda, but what God has planned for your life, he is certainly going to watch over you to fulfill. He is, he is, if you like, devoted, dedicated to fulfilling his plans, not our plans, but his plans. And the, the scripture actually continues, listen to me, you stubborn-hearted, you are far from righteousness. I will bring my righteousness near, it is not far away, and my salvation will not be delayed. Well, you see, we have received that salvation, um, and when we don't have to be stubborn-hearted people that are far from righteousness. That is speaking of people that belong to the world, but we are the righteousness of God. We have been made righteous before God if we are clothed with Christ, if we belong to him. So God has, is not far away. He is with us always. He has said that, and he actually lives within us, and we live in him, and his salvation will not be delayed because he has already made us part of that salvation. Now, we can move on. I, I, you know, it'd be lovely to go through the whole of Isaiah, but I'm going to jump ahead now to chapter 48 and verse 16. Come near me and listen to this. 
From the first announcement, I have not spoken in secret. At the time it happens, I am there. And now the Sovereign Lord has sent me with his Spirit. This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord your God, who teaches you what is best for you, who directs you in the way you should go. Now, you see, these are prophetic words that on the one hand refer to Jesus coming as the Messiah, and on the other hand refer to all his people, all those who have belonged to him. They're a word to Israel, but they're a word to all those who are incorporated into Israel. This is the richness of these prophetic words. Now, what is God saying to you, therefore, as a believer today through this scripture? Well, here's a command. Come near me and listen. Now, that's what we need to do every day of our lives. In our prayer time, we don't only want God to listen to us, but we want to listen to him. And then he says, from the first announcement, I have not spoken in secret. At the time it happens, I am there. When God speaks to us prophetically, he is announcing what he is about to do. He is speaking into our present situation, not just foretelling the future, but he wants us to believe what he is saying so that his purposes can then unfold before us. He he says that he always announces what he is about to do before it happens. So it's very important for us to be listening to God, to believe what he says, and then to pray into being the promises that he gives us. And then we read, and now the sovereign Lord has sent me with his spirit. Well, of course, that that was true about Jesus when he came, but it's true about us who are believers in Jesus. He has sent us out into the world, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. He has given us the spirit so we can go out into the world and impact the lives of other people with the truths about Jesus. We can take them the life of the kingdom. We can reach out to them with the power of God and see him healing people. We are his messengers. We are his ambassadors. We are his witnesses. And he says, this is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord, your God, who teaches you what is best for you. Now, if you know the Lord, you know the truth of that. Not everything that God says to us is what we want to hear, but he will never say anything to us unless it is for our benefit. Every word that he speaks into your life is to have a positive effect, even the words of discipline, even the words of correction, because he wants his very best for your life. So if he sees that there are things that need to be corrected or adjusted in your life, he will speak accordingly to bring you into his order so that you can inherit the very best promises that he has for you. In other words, he is the Lord our God, and we are surrendered in our hearts and minds to him, and he teaches us what is best for us. This is what you, you, you have to understand. God knows. God is wisdom. God is love. And in his love and in his wisdom, he would teach you what is best for you. So even when you're in a situation where you may feel confused, you don't understand what's happening, or you don't understand why it's happening, God is there with you. He will lead you through it. It will all make sense one day. It may not have been the way that you would have chosen to go, but God knows exactly what he's doing in your life. And one thing is absolutely clear. God has never and will never, ever make a mistake. By definition, he can't make a mistake. Everything is being conformed to the purpose of his will, as Paul put it. It's very interesting, Colin, this verse that God always announces what he does. He never speaks in secret. He's always told us right from the beginning what he's going to do next. I guess this is why we can be so sure that uh, that we can trust him. Yes, well, uh, you know, there are so many promises in Scripture that have already been fulfilled that we can have every encouragement to believe that those that are yet to be fulfilled shall indeed be fulfilled because all the promises are given by the same faithful God. So he teaches us, Uh, what is best for us, and directs us in the way we should go. And this is the thing, you see, if you have submitted your life to the Lord Jesus, he will direct you in the way that you are to go. Now, of course, if you want to live in independence, if you want to do your own thing, you don't want to be directed. You don't really want the will of God for your life. You just want God to support you in your own selfish will. But if you really are surrendered to God, then you want him to direct you in the way uh, that you should go. Um, And 
you know, God says to his people, if only you had paid attention to my commands, your peace would have been like a river, your righteousness like the waves of the sea. You see, when we step outside of the will and the purposes of God, then we lose our peace with God. We just know instinctively something is wrong, and we've got to come back to his will. And his promise also is your descendants would have been like the sand, your children like its numberless grains. Their name would never be cut off nor destroyed from before me. What we have to understand is that the decisions we make as believers affect our children and therefore will affect our children's children. There is a knock-on effect. We chose to bring up our children to know, to love, and to serve the Lord. What's the result? They're all pastors. They're all being greatly used of God. All their children are born again. They all know the Lord. They all love the Lord. All want to live a life of serving the Lord. Why? Because we made a series of choices. Those choices have impacted the lives of our children, who in turn have impacted the lives of their children. And uh, this, this is something that every one of us needs to realize that we have a responsibility. If, if you as a, uh, as a believer go away from the Lord, that can have a negative effect upon your children and your children's children. You can either sow blessing or you can sow curse into your own family. And so the Lord says, leave Babylon, flee from the Babylonians, leave the world in its ways, keep to God's way, keep to his will, keep to his purpose for his kingdom. Uh, and and what will the Lord do? Well, he will sustain you and keep you walking in his ways, and he will bring you to the fulfillment of everything he has planned for you. You've been listening to Faith for Today, presented by Julia Fisher. This program is sponsored by Kingdom Faith. For further information, visit our website, kingdomfaith.com. 